A billion fans. Glenn Maxwell gives us an insight into just how challenging it is when things don't go to plan in the IPL. Captain Cummins continues to deliver. We cross to Michael Clark in India for the latest. And a heavyweight battle ahead. Langer against Ponting. The pressure is on. Let's go around the wicket. Hello and welcome to Around the Wicket. I'm Narrowly Meadows. Callum Ferguson alongside me. Our last ball thriller overnight in the IPL. Rashid Khan with a boundary to get the job done for the Gujarat Titans up against the Rajasthan Royals, handing the Royals their first loss of 2024. But the much-needed Aussie watch, it is World Cup watch, yes. Callum Ferguson. Take us through how the Aussie batters are going, first of all, over the last week in the IPL. Yeah, look, I think David Warner's continuing to show that he's... he's probably the standout for the Australians, albeit uh, Tim David really starting to put his hand up. He's starting to get rolling. 45 off 21 uh, in his last game. So he's starting to show a real impact that we expect from Tim David wherever he goes. Uh, Travis Head, his last few games he's managed to get starts but hasn't been able to go on. So he'll be looking to rectify that. Uh, but Marcus Stoinis is probably the one that We've been well, one of the players we've been a bit worried about, but he's uh, got his first 50 of the tournament under his belt. So hopefully that can be a launch pad for him to really start to kickstart his uh, his launch towards an Australian World Cup. You know, I feel like he still needs to put some more runs on the board. It's going to be a build for him. Taking a look at the bowlers, and overnight Spencer Johnson was in action, and you're liking what you see. I am. Throughout the tournament so far, he's bowled. A lot of death overs, which is you know, a lot of responsibility for a young player, first time going into an IPL. But he's been able to do this with regularity around the world, and now to do it at the, you know, almost the pinnacle of franchise cricket around the world and show good consistency throughout the tournament doing so. Death bowling is exactly what Australian selectors will want to see leading into a World Cup. Maybe he's just giving himself a bit of a chance. They'll keep an eye on him throughout the tournament. But Pat, Com Pat Cummins has been absolutely outstanding throughout this tournament. He is the standout. I would have to say that uh, Mitch Stark is still a bit of a concern. Put in a good one a couple of games ago, but still not quite finding his rhythm. Well, let's bring in Michael Clark, who is in India now. Uh, Pup, thanks so much for your company. Pat Cummins, hey Captain guys. Courageous, one for 22 up against the Punjab Kings, going at under six runs and over. And there was a bit of question mark over him because the last time he was in the IPL for the Kolkata Knight Riders a couple of years ago, he was going at over 10 runs and over. Are you impressed with his form so mm. far? Yeah, he's been brilliant, Paddy. Uh, I think the captaincy has been good for him as well. He's probably getting the best out of his team. He looks like he's enjoying it. And his bowling's been exceptional. Again, the other thing I do like about Pat when he's captain, he still understands how good a bowler he is. Mm. So whether that's in the power play or death overs or the team searching for a wicket, he's happy to bring himself on. And, and that's a really fine balance to try and work out when does the team need me? What is my number one job? As a bowler, that's to take wickets and then still utilise yourself in the right way. You, you see a lot of times with captains, they might bat themselves as high as they would like or I might extend themselves in when if somebody else was captain, they wouldn't do that. And from the bowling front, won't bowl themselves as much as they probably should. Where I think Paddy's got a great balance at the moment. Uh, his team's playing well, which helps, and they're full of confidence. Pup, do you feel like that's something he's going to continue to get better at as well as he goes? Because he's obviously still young in captaincy terms, having not really done a lot of captaincy before he took it on at an uh, international level. Yeah, I think he will, Ferg. I think the other, I think what we've seen in the past probably six to eight months is tactically he's really improved. And I think going to the IPL and captaining will help him. 2020 cricket is probably the hardest format to captain mm. because you haven't got time to think and one mistake can cost you the game. Where in test cricket particularly, you've got time. If you bring a bowler on, it doesn't work, you can drag him. Uh, if you set certain fields and an opportunity goes down, you can make it, You can make that switch. T20 cricket, you haven't got that time. So I, I reckon this, this captaincy experience under pressure at the World Cup, he's still the overseas player, huge expectation. I actually think it will help his, help his captaincy tactically a lot and I think again like you say he's young um I think he's really his captaincy in the last 12 months no one can question 
He's willing to make tough decision, decisions. He's willing to do things that are different. Um, you know, there's already been times in this tournament where he sent teams into bat and commentators have questioned that, but he's found a way to get the results. So whatever his plan is as captain and the team's plan is, it's going hand in hand and it's coming together and it's working at the moment. But as we've seen before, there's a long way to go in this IPL, but at the moment... I think he's doing an an exceptional job. From one million dollar man to another, Mitchell Stark just two wickets so far this IPL going at 11 Mm. runs and over. Is he spot under pressure and what's going wrong for Starkey? I don't reckon it's under pressure, Nez. I think when you've paid that much money, you probably can't afford to have him <laughs> stirring Gary right. Reid. Um, but more more than that, Starkey's a very, very good bowler in any format, but particularly in 2020 cricket. So I don't know. He just at the moment, he's probably not getting conditions where the ball is swinging as much as he would like with the brand new ball, where he's at his most dangerous. And then he's death bowling as well at the moment. He's probably not picking up the wickets. So, or he's not picking up certainly the tail enders that he normally does. I, I don't think he's doing too much wrong. Um, I think Starkey's in one of those situations. You just got to keep faith. I think you know how good he is. He's a strike weapon. And, and I think come the pressure games, that's where you'll probably see him stand up the most. So hopefully KKR keep the faith and, and keep backing him. Uh, he'll come good, I'm pretty sure. And, of course, you're going to be calling tonight's huge game between RCB and the Mumbai Indians, which will feature Glenn Maxwell. Maxie will join us shortly on Around the Wicket. But, Pup, is there something you're mm-hmm. noticing about the Aussie superstar? Tough conditions in the last one. He comes in when they've already got a huge score on, on the board as far as an opening partnership mm-hmm. goes, and he needs to go right from the very first ball. It didn't work out for him. What would you like to see from Maxie? Uh, a couple of runs. <laughs> um... I think Delhi in general have not been playing. Uh, sorry, RCB in general have not been playing good cricket. So I think that that's probably put a lot of them under pressure. Um, I think there's a bit of talk over here about when Max is coming in. A lot of people want to see him come in further down the order. But look, he's the overseas player. He's a very good player. He came to this tournament in good form. So I don't think it matters where he bats. He's probably just got to give himself a little bit of time. And again, the way Maxi plays is is maximum risk. You know, even the way he got out the other day, he's so leg side of the ball. His front leg's nowhere near the ball. He's looking to hit boundaries. Uh, there's massive risk with that. So, again, I think Maxi likes Stark in particular. They're X-factor players. You've got to take the good with the bad. If he gets it right, he wins a game on his own. And, and I think with Glenn Maxwell, he's shown throughout his career, he needs momentum. He goes both ways. If he's, if he's not making runs, the negative momentum mm. seems to come and come and come and he gets a number of low scores. But the other thing, when he can flick that switch and get some runs, then you might see him make two or three hundreds in a row and win games on his own. So, again, Max is a brilliant player. Um, he just needs to find a way, I think, to get that first. Well, Pup's sticking around, Fergus sticking around, because after this short break, we're going to talk about the Delhi Capitals. Ricky Ponting under a little bit of pressure. Don't go anywhere. And now it comes down to a nine-game tournament. You know, we, we, we've got to win eight of our next nine games. Um, as simple as that. So we will do everything we can. Chins up, everybody. We have good days, we have bad days. And quite often in the game of cricket, we end up having more bad days than we have good days. As, as individuals, you have more bad days than good ones. And that what, that's what makes the good ones so bloody good and we have to enjoy. That's all for me. The game's done. Results there. All we talk about now is getting better for our next one. All we talk about. It's how all of us, as individuals and as a team, can do things better to make sure we're well well prepared for our next chance. The Delhi Capitals, led by Ricky Ponting, just one win from five matches. Pup, what's the talk over there? Uh, Delhi's under the pump, there's no doubt about it. Um, Injuries probably aren't helping them at the moment. I think they're still trying to work out what their best balance is with their overseas players. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of positivity about Rishabh Hunt coming back into Delhi after such a long period of time and his horrific accident, and that's been the one positive, um, and he's playing really well. But, yeah, look, I think Punner is coach. He's been there for a long time. Um, he's got to find a way to get wins. I think at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's over here particularly, it, you judge so harshly as a coach or a captain, but probably more so a coach, Um I don't think everyone knows how good a coach Ricky is, but, yeah, unfortunately, Delhi have not had the, the season that they've wanted, wanted so far this year, but also the last few years as well. So 
Um, yeah, Ricky needs to continue to find a way to, to get the best out of his team and probably turn some things around. I think their first couple of games, they were one decision or, um, you know, a second away from, from turning that around and get they could they could have been three from three. Um, but you don't get the results and that pressure just builds. So there's a bit of talk about their performances at the moment. Um, yeah, they've got to find a way to... I guess get their overseas players fully fit, work out the right balance and, and get some victories. So Ricky Ponting is seventh year in charge. First year in charge, they finish bottom of the points table. Then he leads them to the playoffs for the next three, including finishing top of the ladder in that time. Mm. But in the last couple of seasons, they've missed out and they've had a lot more losses than they've had wins. Is the pressure on him to keep his job, do you think, Ferg? I think if you look at the history of the IPL, uh, there's been very little wriggle room for a, a coach and they don't have a lot of patience typically. So I think mm. Michael's right. What he's talking about with the, the chatter around his, his tenure now starting to come, that'll, that'll only increase exponentially over the next few games if they can't find winning form. So um, yeah, as I said, there's not a great history of patience. The wins need to start coming for Rick because they did start very well under him. They've hit a road hump. And then it is Ricky Ponting up against Justin Langer. Boy, oh boy, that one becomes big in the context of what we've just spoken about on Friday night, Pop. Yeah, well, you talk about, you know, Lang's first year. Um, you can see he's super excited uh, uh, and his team's playing pretty well at the moment uh, versus Punt that's been there for, for such a long period of time and knows the grind that IPL brings. So, yeah, look, those two are great mates. There's no doubt about it. Um, they mightn't be... Uh, when the game's on, but yeah, I think I think I think we're in for a good game. I think both teams need to win. Uh, Lang's obviously trying to grab this momentum and and keep this form going. Where Punter's just got to find a way. Um, he's got to work out what his best eleven is, and then he's got to have their, the players have got to step up and play their best cricket. Cameron Green really needs to to make sure he's performing. Uh, Mitch Marsh with his hamstring. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Mm. Uh, is he going to stay? Uh, is he going to continue to take part in this IPL or are Cricket Australia going to fly him home being the 2020 captain now? So, yeah, there's there's a lot of pressure on Delhi. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, Cameron Green in action again for RCB tonight mm. up against the Mumbai. But that point on Mitch Marsh, what do you think Cricket Australia should be doing given his soft tissue um history and the fact that, as we believe, he will be World Cup captain. Yeah, look, I think they'll they'll tread carefully. I mean, we've we've seen, and we'll talk about it a bit later, Nathan Lyon but not being able to play his, his full tournament in county. Um, it looks like Cricket Australia's feel around these players is a little bit cautious, so I'm a bit worried that they'll drag him home. I'd rather see him stay as long as it's, you know, a, a low-grade hamstring. Mm. Keep him over there because... If he can get some cricket at the back end of the tournament, that's far better than sitting on his hands back here in Australia and wrapped up in cotton wool in my eyes. And you're pretty passionate about Nathan Lyon. You just Very. mentioned him. So he's Very. over there playing county yeah. cricket for Lancashire. And Cricket Australia have come in and said, you can only play seven of nine. We're managing you. But there's no other cricket for Nathan Lyon, predominantly so, yeah. until next summer. What do you think? Oh, I, I really dislike this. I hate it. I, I'd love to see him get the opportunity to play the full season if he thinks that's the best thing for his career. Because I, I feel like this opportunity to get the Duke ball in his hand for a full season, learn as much as he can about as many facilities around the country. That leaves him in better shape next time he goes over for an Ashes. And we know how dear the Ashes are to us. We need to make sure we give ourselves every opportunity to knock them back on their heels over there, pup. I tell you what, you don't get that fight up that often, no, Callum like Ferguson. <laughs> Michael Clark, thank I, you. I'm with you, Ferg. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> with you. Look, I can understand it with all-rounders like Cameron Green, mm. Mitchell Marsh, uh, these guys that are, you know, if they would have been playing county cricket, bowling lots of overs, batting and making a lot of runs, I can understand the protection around players like that, even fast bowlers. Yeah. I can understand that. But uh, Nathan Lyon, he bowls spin. Uh, we've seen in his career he's a much better bowler the more he bowls. Yes. I'd rather see him play cricket than what's he going to do, come home and do a pre-season, yeah. rip a hamstring or a calf trying to do a 2K time <laughs> trial. Like, it just doesn't make sense to no, me. And you. the other thing as well, it, if Nathan Lyon was playing in the IPL, would they be dragging him home? Yeah, you know, I, I just find it, I find it difficult to handle that if you're in India, you can stay and play, but if you're anywhere else, then, you know, come home because we need you here. And, again, what's the difference? He's playing seven games instead of nine games. Yeah. Like, I'd rather see Lionel keep playing and 
Uh, I'm sure he would like to keep bowling. That's what he does. It's what he does well. And, yeah, I don't know. It just seems very conflicting that if you're in the UK, we'll drag you back. But if you're in the IPL, IPL, stay there and do your thing. I love it when the boys are fired up. Michael Clark, <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Don't go anywhere and around the wicket because Glenn Maxwell is up next. Welcome back to Around the Wicket, where our superstar guest, Glenn Maxwell, is back with us, representing RCB in India. Maxie, thanks so much for joining us, especially on game day. You take on the Mumbai Indians tonight, hoping to turn your season around. One win from five so far. What do you need to do to turn it around? Well, we need to start winning. We need to start helping out our, our superstar, Virat Kohli. Um, he's been amazing so far, and probably what he hasn't had is... Um, someone around him to, I suppose, keep the momentum going, build those bigger partnerships with, which we probably had last year. Um, myself, Faf, um, and a, a few of the Indian players were able to build partnerships around each other and, and be able to build towards those big tournament, uh, big totals and keep us in games. And um, it feels like it's been a little bit of a one-man show where we haven't been able to have those big contributions to um, help big partnerships and the other night was a perfect example. Um, Vera just was almost crying out for someone after that opening partnership just to just to go with him for a little bit. And conditions certainly played a, played a part in that. It was a it was a, a slow low wicket um, before the dew came in, and um, it was quite difficult to sort of start start your innings. And um, for someone like Vera out there to I suppose get through that, he probably just needed someone to come in, um, have a have a 10 ball knock of something around 25 to 30 and um, it probably would have changed the game a little bit but certainly got easier under lights with the dew coming in which a lot of these grounds do and that's something that we've just got to face and um, we've found that with a few of the grounds that um, 200 is sometimes a, quite an easy chaseable total when that, when that dew comes in and um, it, it's something that uh, we've spoken about as a group and trying to be ultra-aggressive and, and trying to take the game forward. So on that very point, the beauty of having you is that we get these real-time insights. Mm. Behind the scenes, who's been most vocal in amongst the playing group? Yeah, it's been pretty consistent. I, I think Andy Flower's been outstanding as a coach. He's been uh, quite measured after the games and I can imagine it gets quite... Um, frustrating, I suppose, as a coach, you've got a lot of uh, quality in the lineup, and it's not quite delivering the way you probably thought it was going to on paper. And um, I think the fact that um, myself, Faf, Virat um, have been able to sort, of, I suppose, share our um, wisdom amongst the group as much as we possibly can, trying to keep everyone calm, and um, and DK as well with his his experience. Um, we've tried to, I suppose, keep consistent as possible with our behaviours off the field, our chats around uh, the younger guys and um, I suppose just keep everyone's spirits up and making sure that we're still tr striving to um, get better each day and um, hopefully that will turn and it only takes one or two wins to, to obviously turn your tournament around and you can hopefully get on a run. No, that's exactly right, Maxie. Now, the IPL, so much money, so many eyeballs, so much passion in India for it. When things aren't going your way, whether it's as a team or as an individual, run us over here in Australia through exactly what that's like because there's nothing like it in Australia. Well, it's even more extreme um, at RCB with the probably the best fan base in the world. <laughs> yeah. um, they're, they're very vocal. <laughs> I've had... Um, I've had some aggressive DMs and uh, people oh, yeah. slide into my messages over the last <laughs> little bit. Uh, they forget they forget good stuff pretty quickly, but uh, the same thing. They're, they're so passionate. They're so excited about um, what they want their team to achieve. It's been a long time waiting for a trophy for them. And, um, yes, they had the women's trophy, but this team has been, I suppose, their heart and soul for the last 16 years and, um, they're just desperate to see some success from this franchise and um, you can certainly feel that in the stadium, the desperation from the fans and 
um, yeah, we, we just they just need to know that we're trying our hardest each day and um, sometimes it just doesn't come off. So you personally, Maxie, what do you go back to? I, I remember talking to Nathan Lyon. He said, I go to YouTube and I watch my highlights, the Adelaide test from years gone by. Do you go back to Afghanistan at the one Keddy and, and making 200 in, in that win? What do you go back to to get yourself in that right frame? Well, we're quite fortunate in the position we are. We have a lot of our net sessions um, videotaped. So we've got video cameras basically on every ball from the stumps end. And um, each morning after that I have a train session, I've got, um, I suppose, all the footage that I've faced the night before. And um, I like to sort of go through all of that footage and sort of see how I'm, how I'm shaping up and compare it to when I'm going really well or really poorly and sort of um, see what marries up and see if I can make any adjustments, even tactically, mentally, and uh, make those adjustments, I suppose, on the fly and even have discussions with certain coaches. It might not necessarily be the batting coach. I might talk to the bowling coach, Adam Griffith, and um, just have discussions around that, what the plans might be coming up. Um, and I've always found that's a, a good way for me to almost go back to square one, which is the stuff I'm trying to do at training. And even over the last two days, I've had two completely different training sessions. The first day I had a shocker where I felt like I was struggling with the heat, I was struggling with my bat swing. And then yesterday I took a bit more time and sort of made some adjustments um, in training and had one of the, my best net sessions of the, the tournament so far. And it was only just having those little chats around that uh, feels like that makes a massive difference. And then you go into the game with the, the, the same confidence that you had at the start of the tournament. So I feel like that's been a growth um, that I've had over the last few years where I've been able to sort of make um, little adjustments in tournament um, without obviously without reinventing the wheel and being able to, um, I suppose, stick to what I'm really good at and um, hopefully that brings the results. It doesn't always work like that, <laughs> as we right. know, but, um, <laughs> but hopefully uh, I can start my ends well, start my ends with a bit, bit better purpose and a bit better tactically as well. Jeez, that's good insight. Oh, it's it? fantastic. Like you can't get anywhere else. <laughs> now, um, Maxi, Virat Kohli, you talked about him a little bit earlier, but he's the orange cap holder. He's 100 runs ahead of the next best. It's, it's been a great tournament for him so far, but have you been surprised that leading into the tournament there was some chat around whether he should even be in the Indian World Cup squad? I can't believe it. <laughs> well, well, it's not it, it's not surprising in the fact that there's 1.5 billion, and I reckon half of them are unbelievable cricketers in this country. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's a hard team to get into, and you you look at India's best T20 players, which are all playing this tournament. They're, they're phenomenal players. There, there should be heat on every player. If they're not pl playing well at a certain time, there's going to be heat on them. But yes, Virat Kohli is the most clutch player I've ever played against. Um, you see, his career just stands as the most amazing um, tournament rap sheet. I think the, the innings he played against us in Mahali in 2016 uh, T20 World Cup is still one of the best teams I've ever had played against me. And... Um, he changed the face of the whole game. He was hitting balls on a wicket that was inconsistent um, into different areas. And um, his ability to change his hands position at the last moment and flick it almost like a table tennis bat um, and time it into a gap or over the fence is something that's almost unmatched around the world. And um, his awareness of what the, what he needs to do to win the game is, is phenomenal. And uh, it's been great to sort of play alongside him and train with him and watch him go about it. Um, but I still have to play against him. So I'm hoping India don't pick him. Um, it'd be great to not have to come up against him. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly grateful over the last, it's been four years now um, that I've been a teammate of his and I've got to sort of see it a bit more up close and talk to him about his game and talk to him about the way he trains. And, um, and yeah, we've, we've become really good friends, but, I think 
there's just such a, a huge admiration for the way he goes about on the field and the way he is as a person. I love seeing the intensity in your face, Maxie, when you're reliving those innings. It's yeah. like you're out there in the middle playing those shots that he was playing. It's, it's great still, to see it the It still passion. pains me. It still <laughs> pains me. But... <laughs> just quickly as we let you go, you've got the Mumbai Indians tonight. Fair to say it's a must-win game for both teams, just one win each. And that means Tim David, who's found a little bit of form, and I hear that he likes his work over there in India. Yeah, he's the king of the IPL. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, I think, having... Corin Pollard is um, one of the one of the coaches in Mumbai. Is certainly rubbing off on him. He's walking around like him. He's he's, he's sort of swaggering through um, everyone in the crowd. And uh, I was watching him last night training, and he sort of finished off and sort of slowly sort of walked over and <laughs> gives you a big high five. Hey mate, how you going? Yeah, no, just hit some sixes. Yeah, doing the thing. Yeah, you know. Like, just all of a day's work for him at the moment. He's <laughs> he's a bit bit of a T20 mercenary at the moment, and um, he's certainly getting the job done pretty much everywhere around the world. We saw how good he was at the back end of the international summer. Mm. Um, he was phenomenal, and he's. I think I saw an interview about uh, Matthew Wade did the other day. He talked about Tim David's power, almost the closest to West Indian type power that we've seen in Australia, and it, it, it's spot on the money. There's no one in Australia that sort of has that. And um, he's a he's a guy that's probably set the blueprint um, for Australians uh, for, for power hitting at the back end. And um, he's doing it so consistently and so brilliantly at the moment. And we're certainly going to have to um, come up with our plans to stop him. But yeah, he's been he's been really impressive to watch um, and amazing how consistent he's been at it as well. Maxie, thank you so much for your time. We're keeping our fingers crossed. At this time next week, we're talking about a big, a couple of performances yep. from you and RCB. Thanks so much for joining us, especially on game day. Don't go anywhere. This is Around the Wicket. Time for the short stuff. What about this from Ravi Shastri? Uh, does this photo qualify as a thirst trap is what oh, he wants to no. know. Oh, no, seriously. Come on, Rav. I mean, not for me, but it could be for a certain population of the world. Tim Payne wants the striker's job. Do you like that? I'd like to see him shortlisted because I think he'd be fantastic in the role if he got it. Rishabh Punch, should be, he be in India's World Cup 11? Resounding yes for me. Get him in there. We'll see you next week. Glenn Maxwell is back again. This has been Around the Wicket.